Okay, it's time to start. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Jun Myung Kang from Hira Packard Reps, and then our team is uh, Mario Sanchez from Hira Packard Reps, and then we have um, JK Lee from Fairfoot Networks. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about policy canvas, uh, where we can easily draw our own policies for OpenStack services. First, uh, we're going to show the current policy management in OpenStack, and then we're going to show the motivating examples in terms of how to define policies, and then we're going to show the, our policy canvas as our solution, and then we're going to show the learning uh, demonstration of our policy canvas on the OpenStack dashboard. Um, in a complex networks or cloud environment such as OpenStack, it's very critical to manage the multiple infrastructure component as a whole, uh, such as uh, uh, computing, storage, networking. As uh, there are many different types of services in OpenStack are growing, we need a well-defined policy management framework for OpenStack. Um, as you know, there are multiple policy writers who want to define their own policies such as the cloud operator, network administrators, or application developers. But sometimes a software-defined application itself can define their own policies. We have many multiple different types of dimensions dealing with uh, maybe security, performance, availability, and some middle boxes such as a firewall, DPI, IDS. In this talk, uh, we're going to tackle on networking policies, but we uh, believe that uh, our insight can be applied to the other types of policies. Okay, as you know, currently we are using the security group and rules, uh, which can allow or deny some protocols or ports from source to the destinations. Maybe we can, also, we can associate this group or rules to the specific VM or specific network port. In terms of automations of cloud orchestration, we can use the HIST service with some predefined template which he can guide how to define groups or rules. In terms of some application-specific policies, maybe you can use a uh, Murano service. However, these uh, groups or rule definitions are too low-level commands, which is a little, uh, little hard to use for some older users. While this uh, interface is so fragmented, that means the, the multiple command job is scattered from multiple uh, data sources. Even though we have the uh, same policies, we have to use the multiple uh, data sources. Um, in terms of uh, high-level intent-based manage management for OpenStack, group-based policy, GBP, has been introduced. Instead of, using a, 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 instead of writing policies for the specific endpoint, GBP defines a group of endpoints and write policies for the communication between the EPGs, endpoint groups. However, these EPG definitions, creations, and association with the EP should be uh, done by only via the GBP APIs. There is no way to leverage endpoint properties or policies in existing OpenStack. As you know, we have multiple policies from multiple writers, so GBP doesn't handle these uh, multiple writer problems. Finally, we have a very well-defined uh, Congress service as a global policy management framework for OpenStack has been actively integrated in the current op uh, OpenStack release. Uh, Congress basically can get uh, some system state of the cloud from the many multiple data sources, such as Nova, Neutron, Swift, and so on. And then it can verify if the cloud abides the policies. As you can see in the, this example, uh, Congress uh, is uh, using the a variant of SQL-like uh, data row language to define the policies. And then it can provide some simple table join for the multiple policies. Actually, the, this data row has very good expressiveness and the bus style. However, uh, we just, we, it requires a steep uh, learning curve to data row, and also it doesn't handle some multiple writer problems. In order to overcome the, these limitations, uh, we need to decouple some high-level intent from the underlying low-level interfaces. And also, the interface should be easy to use, intuitive, and high-level interfaces. And so we need uh, some automatically deploy the policies to the infrastructure and uh, scalably. So we are uh, proposing the policy canvas, 
which can draw our network policies for OpenStack services. Actually, we got an idea from the real-world examples. When we define or when we update some policies, usually we have uh, some face-to-face -face meeting or some online meeting from the bunch of people from the uh, different organizations. Mostly, we are using the whiteboard for discussing the, some policies because it is very easy to use and user-friendly. After discussion and then deciding the policies, we can assign the task to the relevant people, and then they can uh, use the CRI command or management framework to uh, <coughs> using the low-level command for the that policies. Our idea is to uh, maybe let the users easily express the policies as easy as drawing diagrams on the whiteboard. And that we, our system can take the, this diagram and then generate the all relevant uh, command or API automatically. Okay, we have a multiple policies from the multiple data sources, and then they can create their own policies using our policy canvas, and our policy canvas can generate all relevant rules using the OpenStack open APIs. Okay, I'm gonna hand over to the JK for more details about our policy canvas. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so policy canvas is built on top of two main concepts, graph abstraction and graph composition. Now, as you know, graph can naturally express various networking policies using its uh, node expression and then edges between them. The graph is easy to read and write by the human users, but also it's uh, readable by the system, so you can use uh, leverage existing graph theories and graph algorithms to analyze, compose, and verify the policies written in graphs. So we take those multiple policy input policies written in uh, express as a graph from different policy sources and compose them into a one big combined graph. The system-wide graph, conflict-free. So we are resolving the conflicts and doing this composition proactively prior to deploy those policies down to the runtime system. So it gives a chance to the each policy writers to review the, their policy in the final form in the composed graph. And it basically prevents the une unexpected system behavior from the runtime system because it will be too late for, to detect and then fix such a conflicts in an operational network. And this kind of composed graph can be used as a ground truth for policy enforcement and runtime troubleshooting. So let me talk a little bit more about the PGA, policy graph abstraction, and its composition algorithm. So PGA graph model is, has a nodes and edges, and each node represents a set of a group of endpoints sharing the same property. In this example, we have a policy P1 from application admin. It allows the communication from the marketing employees to the web servers for the HTTPS traffic, and the traffic should go through the load balancer, LB, function box in the middle. So it's an accurate policy and also a middle box policy. It's comp uh, all expressed in one graph. And we are using the s different color to express the user intent that this uh, communication is allowed exclusively to the marketing. So we have a similar graph from the cloud operator P2, allowing some traffic from campus to cloud, and the traffic should be monitored by the byte counter, BC box. And as you can notice here, the, um, the EPG nodes are def defined over logical labels like a marketing, web, and cloud campus. They are not just random words. They are well-defined logical uh, names or labels. And th they are defined from existing data sources. For example, the location information from uh, the OpenStack, Keystone, or Nova data services, or the employee identities or the application like a web and database. This can be also extracted from the Murano and other data sources. So using those logical labels, we decouple the policy expression from the low-level specifics like uh, IP address or MAC address, so that this policy can be reused and portably on different, uh, multiple different network targets. So for the composition, we compute the union of the input policies using some set theoretic Venn diagram analysis. So we detect the con intersection between two policies, P1 and P2, and see if there is any conflict. If there is a conflict, we reserve the conflict by using some constraints specified in the original uh, input policy graphs. For example, 
um, there is a conflict between P1 and P2 for the communication, uh, the HTTP communication from non-marketing employees to the web server in the cloud, we will show in the next diagram. And that conflict is resolved by using the exclusive um, requirement from the P1 as a constraint in the composition process. After composition, we store the composed graph as a set of disjoint policies. This normalization is pretty useful to make the runtime system to be able to uh, look up the policies in a constant time lookup. The, you can make build a fast and pretty scalable runtime system. So that was the theory, and this is the example that we composed from the two input policies. For that, we need some relationship between labels. For example, here, we leverage the information that marketing employees are in campus and web servers are deployed in the cloud so that we know that the marketing label and campus label, they need to be composed together. But there's no need to compose marketing label and cloud label because marketing employees will not be placed in the cloud anyway. And this composed graph, you can easily walk through it and verify what's going on in the final version. For example, there is no gra um, edge from non-marketing and campus to the web in cloud, correctly implementing the exclusive access requirement from P1. Okay. So this is the same policy written in English, so you, you, but it's not really readable by the machine. So human user needs to basically read through it, detect some overlapping relationship, conflict, and somehow compose them into this kind of set of prioritized rules using GBP or group-based policy or maybe open flow rule table expressions. So this kind of careful insertion of or prioritization can be done in composing maybe few number of policies, but it will be challenging to compose multiple, maybe more than dozens of policies. And we believe that uh, composing policies in such a prioritized rule form is too low level. The rule sets are already kind of compiled version of intent and policy. So we need more higher level abstraction like this graph abstraction we have here. Then the system can automatically compose them into uh, one big graph. Okay. So here we have a, a deep, advanced version of the different uh, policy graph examples. And we are using different type of colors or a node shape or edge shape to clearly capture the intents of the policy writers. And we also have this uh, label namespace or label trees defining the relationship between labels. Like I said before, in order to proactively compose such uh, uh, policies written in labels, we need the relationships. And here we have three type of trees, for example, tenant tree, location tree, and um, security status tree, saying whether the, the virtual machine is normal status or quarantine status. So these are maintained by different sources and we extract them and maintain um, in the kind of three, three data structure. So for the labels with the parent-child relationships, for example, the application and database label, they have overlapping relationships. We know for sure that we need to compose the policies written for application database. But at the same time, uh, the labels like a campus A and campus B, they have sibling relationships. They are mutually exclusive. No virtual machine will be placed in campus A or campus B at the same time. So we don't need to compose them together. Basically, uh, scoping down the composition scope and make the composition algorithm way more scalable. So to test the scalability, we took 20,000 accurate policies from um, global HPIT and um, written for hundreds, more than hundreds of departments, and augmented the accurate policy with um, service policies, composed them into one big million edge graph, taking just 30 minutes. So while we were doing this composition, we realized that the existing um, accurate policy expressions, for example, do not clearly reveal the hidden intents of users. So when you write the whitelisting policy, you know for sure you want to allow the HTTPS traffic from source and destination, but it's not clear what do you want for the rest of it. Do you want to actually deny them or just don't care about that? If it's an application policy, you just want to allow HTTPS traffic for your uh, web server to correctly operate, but you may not care about the other ports. It's similar to the blacklisting. So to handle this problem, uh, we devised some four type of intent accurate edges, starting from must allow, 
can communicate, which is kind of weak allow, and block and conditional. These are quite useful to clearly capture the actual user intent for the whitelisting and blacklisting while application demand. And it drastically reduced the chance of conflict between um, allow and deny policies from the conventional model from 50% down to something like 12%. So it greatly helps the systematic composition of such uh, different policies. So while the June and uh, Mario will talk about our PGA implementation system in OpenStack, we also have some of the Grab compiler and Acre Intent APIs adapted by Open Daylight NIC project. So it will help us to, to render the policy down to the network. And there are also full papers and demos and talks. If you want more information, please refer to them. Let me hand over to Jun. Thank you, JK. OK, uh, let's uh, we dive deep into the more interesting part and in terms of how we implemented the policy canvas on the OpenStack. Uh, like other OpenStack services, our policy canvas is composed of three main parts. PGA backend service and Python client and uh, Horizon GUI as our policy canvas uh, GUI module. Uh, using the policy canvas GUI, uh, we can manage different types of policy grab and also we can create our own policies by just drawing the policy graph. Python client can provide a CLI command and also Python binding APIs. And PGA service can manage the PGA resources, such as input, composed, deployed policy graph, and label trees, and function boxes. We have uh, three types of underlying the, uh, drivers, label drivers, compilation drivers, and enforcement drivers. From the next slide, uh, I'm gonna show the how to use these driver modules for supporting PGA service. Okay, uh, I'm going to show how to create a policy graph and then how to compose multiple policy graph. As JK mentioned previously, uh, we are using the label tree for creating the policy graph. We can get the system state from the label drivers in that it can give the uh, label tree, which is automatically created from the label drivers. And then you can use this uh, label tree for creating our own policy uh, by just drawing the, this policy graph. We can get the, this policy graph from multiple data sources, multiple user or multiple applications. And then we can give this multiple policy graph to the PGA service. PGA service can use a compilation driver for composing this uh, multiple input policy graph uh, by resolving the conflict as much as possible. Currently, we have uh, our own the PGA graph composer. And also, as JK mentioned, we have uh, another graph compiler in the Open Daylight NIC project. And compilation drivers can return this uh, result to the composed graph, and then we can show the, this result graph to the, on the op, uh, policy canvas. Okay, after composition, and then we can maybe deploy one of the composed graph through the PGA service. Uh, basically, this composed graph is a set of the nodes and actions, which means that a set of classifiers and set of actions. We can uh, create this classifier and action through the, our enforcement drivers. Currently, we have a neutron driver, which can create a security group or SFC or middle boxes through the neutron open APIs in terms of the actions. And then we have another Congress driver for classifications. We can automatically generate the data local rules based on the EPG definitions in terms of classifier. Okay, after uh, deploying the, all of the, our uh, policy graph to the infrastructure, so if, uh, maybe we have uh, one uh, new virtual machine, uh, Congress can detect that there is a new virtual machine in that it can update the Congress uh, table, and then it can notify to the, our Congress drivers. Congress can driver, maybe can use the Congress excuse function, or currently we are using the, our neutron driver for associating specific security group to the endpoint. So we don't need to uh, create a manually here, so the whole process is uh, automatically map associated security group and endpoint and endpoint groups. Okay, I am going to hand over to the uh, Mario. Mario will show the learning policy canvas demonstrations. Thanks, Yun. 
Um, so yeah, now I'm go we're going to actually dip into a video demo that we're going to show you of the system working. Um, this slide is just to show you really quickly um, what our setup is going to be for the demo. In this case, um, we have uh, our open uh, our policy canvas installed uh, in the Mitaka OpenStack release using DevStack. Um, we're going to have four different compute nodes in our setup. Um, the different machines will be uh, divided in a, in a couple of different uh, availability zones. And then we're going to use our policy canvas to create policies from the standpoint of two different stakeholders that we call host manager and zone manager. Um, they're going to have different policies to deploy into the system, and we're going to see how our system uh, composes them and deploys them uh, onto the infrastructure. Uh, don't worry so much about the specific policies right now. That's going to be shown in the video next. So let me show, hop into the video. Okay, so our demo scenario, like I said, has four different compute nodes split across uh, two different availability zones, AC1 and AC2. In this case, two of the nodes belong to AC1, which is highlighted in green here, and the other two nodes belong to AC2, which is highlighted in blue. In this case, we're going to spin up four different virtual machines, each of which will run in a different compute node, and all of them will be connected to a single uh, virtual private network. Um, in this case, um, in our desktop scenario, we, uh, I'm going to show you next that we have only a single security group defined that will be applied to all of the VMs that are going to be created. And this default security group only has um, information, a single rule that will allow us to SSH into the system in this case. But that's on, the only thing it will do. Um, so next, we're going to fast forward the video a little bit just to show an autom the automatic creation of the VMs using the Nova CLI. And here on the right is just the, the, um, the, the horizon view of the VMs being created. So once the VMs are created, um, we're going to open two different terminals. Uh, the one on the top left uh, is going to correspond to the VM1, which is instantiated in a compute node that belongs to AC1, availability zone 1. Uh, the second one will be uh, will correspond to the VM3, which is a VM that belongs to availability zone 2 in this case. Um, so next, we're going to start using our policy canvas to create the policies from the standpoint of these different two stakeholders. In the first case, we have a zone manager that only cares about uh, connectivity between availability zones. In this case, this zone manager wants to specify a rule, a policy that allows HTTP traffic between VMs instantiated in availability zone one towards VM running in availability zone two, because those are, for example, web servers. So in order for us to do this, to express it through the canvas, all we have to do is create a new policy canvas, uh, an empty input policy canvas. We specify descriptions and uh, the domain where it's going to be hosted in. From there, we click into the canvas. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag from the label tree in the center the different labels that, uh, that actually uh, uh, work in this policy. In this case, we're going to be dragging from the label tree into the canvas the label that correspond to um, AC1 and AC2. Once we do that, all we have to do is create a unidirectional edge between AC1 to AC2, and, we have, and all we do is allow HTTP traffic between them. Once we do that, we save the graph, and we're basically done. The policy is specified. Um, this is what the graph looks like once it's actually composed. So next, we're going to create the policies from the second st stakeholder point of view. In this case, it's the, what we call the host manager. In our toy example, uh, for some reason, this host manager only cares about connectivity between compute nodes. It doesn't care about connectivity between availability zones. So in this case, she wants to define a policy that allows traffic, SSH and ICMP traffic, between VMs instantiated in CNC32 toward VMs created in compute node CNC3 in this case. So we're going to do that by, again, creating an, an empty input policy graph from our, through our canvas. And what we're going to do, we go into the, the graph, and what we're going to do is drag from the label tree the labels that correspond to CNC32 and CNC3 in this case. 
Once we do that, we create an edge between C and C32 and 3. And we're going to specify that ICMP and SSH traffic can be allowed between these two uh, endpoints, from CNC32 towards CNC3. Once we do that, we save the graph and we're done again. The policy is specified. So from here, what we have to do next is deploy the graph. Um, to do that, first we're going to just open up a couple different windows on the left to show you the original input policy graphs we just created so that you can keep them in mind before composition. So here in the top we're showing the host policy graph and we're gonna show the, the zone policy graph uh, underneath. So from there, what we're going to do is compose a graph. We go into the policy graph uh, canvas on the, on the right. Um, we select compose. And from there, we're just gonna have to select the, the two different policies that we want to compose in this case, which are the ones we just created, which are host policy and, and uh, a, a zone policy. We click compose and the composition is done. In this case, this is what the compose graph looks like on the right. So from here, you can see that our PGA service automatically creates a one unified conflict-free graph on the right. Had there been any conflicts in the composition of these two policies, it would have shown us a pop-up telling us that there was a problem that needs to be addressed. In this case, there were no conflicts, so the graph is created. So the last step then is once we compose, what we have to do is deploy down into the system. Um, the last thing we're going to do then is go into the canvas and we're going to select deploy graph and we're going to select the recently composed graph for deployment. From there, we select the graph and we click deploy. Once, once this happens, uh, we're basically done. The policies have been deployed down to the infrastructure. In this case, the policy canvas will automatically create the required security groups into Neutron with the desired rules that we want, and will automatically apply these security rules to the VMs that classify depending on the different EPGs that were just created using our labels. So in this case, and we're just going into the security group tab so that you can see that they were already created automatically uh, with some rules that make sense according to the graphs. Um, then we're showing you the v one of the VMs and how the specific rules were applied to that particular VM. So next, uh, what we're going to do is a quick connectivity test just for one of the policies to show you that this thing is actually working. And in this case, we're gonna be testing the availability zone policy and we're gonna be testing HTTP traffic between um, VM1 and VM3. VM1, remember, is hosted in AC1, and VM3 is hosted in AC3. So in this case, we're just tailing the log for the web server that is running on VM3. So you, you can see when the ping, actually, well, the get actually uh, hits the server. And then we're just gonna launch a wget from VM1 towards VM3. And because it was already specified in the policies, it should go through, and in this case, it actually goes through. But if we do the reverse test, we try to do an HTTP get from BM3 towards BM1, because it wasn't, it wasn't explicitly allowed in the input policy, it should, not be, it should not go through. And in this case, we are just doing that, doing a wget from BM3 towards BM1, and it doesn't go through. We could do the same test for the other two policies, but uh, in the interest of time, we're just gonna skip those. So the last thing I wanna show you is uh, how our policy canvas automatically is able to discover new VMs, assign them to the specific EPGs depending on the type, uh, on the characteristics of the VM, and apply the actual security policies without us having to do anything. Everything is done automatically. So in this case, we're gonna use Horizon View to create a new VM that belongs to AC2. We're just gonna click through a couple of different static options or default options, and then we're gonna hit Create. When that happens, like I said, our policy canvas will automatically identify the VM, tag it with the appropriate labels, decide which security groups apply to it, and actually apply them. And in this case, we're seeing how the, the VM is being created. Um, the last thing is just to show that the security groups were actually applied to it. So that's what we have for the demo here. We're gonna jump back on the slides. So um, when, 
Uh, we're thinking about uh, future or, or next step for our policy canvas. Uh, we're thinking about, I don't know if you noticed, many of the things that, the things that we showed has to do with ACL-like policies allowed in, I, in, the, in the network. In this case, we're thinking about being able to, for example, extending the canvas so that we can import uh, policies that were not specified through the canvas itself. For so, example, some application actually created the security rules directly on Nova, I'm sorry, on Neutron. So in this case, we should be able to load them into our policy canvas, express them in the, in the same uh, format, graph format, and be able to use the composition algorithm that PGS provides. We're also thinking about uh, being able, for example, to provide, oh, to provide uh, Things like uh, composing newly added features into Neutron, for example, QoS specifications in specific links should be fairly easily to be implemented in this uh, graph-like uh, graph abstraction. And finally, for example, the being able to provide port-level connectivity uh, that is implied in this ACL type of rules. For example, right, if you're assuming that you're allowing connection, that means that their connection already exists, and then you are providing uh, the allow entry on top of it. We, we, we see a way where we can easily express uh, port level connectivity into the graph so that policies like this VM must be connected to this particular network can be expressed. So I'm just going to hand it back to you, uh, to Jake. <laughs> okay, so let me switch a gear a little bit here. So far we talked about how to express policies and compose them into one big composed policy graph. Once we have it, we need to push this down to the network data planes to enforce the policies. But the data planes can have many different forms, hardware, software, edge, core. And the question is that whether this network can implement my policy correctly or not, because different data planes have different capabilities and limitations. So it would be great to have some common clean abstraction to capture such different properties of data planes. Taking one step further, if we can actually program the policy directly down to the data plane, then we don't really need to retrofit our policy into the fixed data plane, but actually we can redefine the data plane in a way such that the policy can be uh, enforced in the best way. And finally, if you have a policy enforced down the data plane, then you want to verify it. That means that you, we want to have some kind of complete network visibility. For that, there are a couple of a few industry-wide open source efforts, starting from OpenFlow data plane abstraction, where Open Compute Project has switch abstraction interface, SI, and P4 as a language to program the flexible data plane. For now, let me talk a little bit about P4 and its benefits in policy enforcement. So P4 is a high-level language to define the data plane, and it's a kind of C-style language that you can define how table operates in terms of match and action, and you can also define the control flow between different tables. And it's, uh, it provides the abstract forwarding model, so it's a protocol independent or also target independent. It's open source Apache version 2 license. And it's been adapted pretty well by the community, for example, um, HP's OpenSwitch network operating system replaced OpenVSwitch by P4 as a default data plane emulator for development and testing. And Open Compute Sci also adapted P4 as an abstraction language. With P4, um, we can do something like this. You can pick the best protocol suited for your policy, for example, VXLAN, or whatever encapsulation protocol, and remove all the others that are not really needed. Or you can define your own custom protocol for service function chaining. And you can also instrument the switches to embed some switch information like a switch ID, port ID, or latency experienced by the packet directly into the data packet so that you can have a complete visibility of the network and the path and mo many more information of the network. That you can easily verify the policy in that way. So uh, traditionally, to push policy down to the data plane, we use some controller APIs to populate the rules of the fixed data plane tables. But with P4, you can define your best data plane, program it in P4 language, and compile it through the programmable data plane, whether hardware or software. The compiler can also auto-generate APIs for the controller to populate the rules in the new data plane. So this could be the better way to push your policy down to the data plane. With that, let me hand over to June to conclude.
Yeah, in this talk, uh, we showed our policy canvas effort, uh, which is uh, to simpler and intuitive abstractions for uh, writing our policies, just like the drawing uh, graph. It is portable, and also we can also automatically uh, create all low-level commands from the high-level graph model, and then we can deploy the uh, infrastructures. Our current state is that we have a learning uh, GUI on the OpenStack horizon, and also we have a PGA service and all relevant APIs, and also we have a two uh, Neutron and Congress drivers for deployment. So we have another uh, graph compiler in Open Daylight NIC. Uh, in terms of uh, collaborations uh, with the uh, OpenStack community, uh, we need more use cases and feedback uh, we can draw or express the, as a graph form. And also, we are, we'd like to maybe contribute our code to the OpenStack community. Okay, thank you. And then we, we can have some uh, Q&A sessions. Thanks. Uh, really interesting stuff. I'm a little confused over what you call your label tree, because when I think of labels, I don't think of a tree at all. And uh, I'm trying to understand what kind of constraints come along with that. And I know you talked about it early on, but you went through it really fast. Could you maybe just spend a quick minute again on that? Sure. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so you can start from, think about the label as a common tagging or metadata inf uh, inf mechanism used in, for example, Docker or any policy management system or even SC Linux, uh, Security Linux Linux, uh, allow users to define some policies using high-level labels. So labels is just a kind of tagging or metadata that can be mapped to any endpoint. So the, there must be a mapping mechanism labeled down to actual endpoints. So actually, uh, the Open Daylight also has such a, a, a label mapping service, which provides some kind of database or set of coring services so that whenever the virtual machine or uh, network endpoint shows up in the system, it may have some properties like location and owner, and these can be expressed as a labels. So we are leveraging that uh, so that we can express the policies purely in the label and later enforce down to infrastructure using such a ma mapping systems. But label tree is another way to actually capture the relationship between labels so that we can proactively analyze, analyze the uh, policies written in labels and compose them. So there is some inference going on. Actually, it's an ongoing effort. Uh, for example, the label tree we showed in the demo, the, the location label tree is automatically constructed by reading the database of the Nova and Keystone, because that's where the uh, availability zones and then uh, compute node informations are stored. And there's a relationship between compute node and then availability zone already available in the database. So we extract those information and then model in the data, tree data structure. And there are some relationship between different type of labels, like a location and then uh, tenant ID. They are not, they cannot be modeled as a one tree. So that's why we have multiple trees. The relationship between different trees, uh, labels belonging to different trees, are modeled as a separate mapping stru uh, data structure. Yep. Hey, uh, thank you. Very good uh, presentation. Uh, one question I had is, is there uh, plans to do policy uh, across regions? So where I could define a policy and then select instances from multiple regions? Yeah, so the, inf the algorithm and then abstraction itself does not limit, and actually it's a design in a way such that we can apply the same policy across different regions. And then if maybe different regions have a different region manager, they have their own regional policy, and then you want to probably deploy the same tenant policy or application policy defined once and uh, enforced down to different regions. Yeah, that's definitely possible. We haven't implemented that way so far because we were not able to actually model the regions in our small uh, environment. That theory, um, technically definitely possible. So you can build like a layer of abstraction on top for multi-region. Yes. Yeah. Right, thank you. Right, then thank you very much. If you have any other questions, then just feel free to grab us in the podium.